So uh, we already mentioned that um, there's also grad module in MSNet, which can use to uh, compute gradients in default. So here we first kind of create x, which is four by one uh, vector. Let me do that. Um, then one key thing is here, we need to attach gradient to x. It will be a do, do two things. The first allocate the memory so we can store the gradient of x. So here, the gradient we has the same shape of x. It's a little bit different to what we teach in the lecture, but uh, we already covered it on the homework. The second of thing it, it will do is like tell the system we need to compute this gradients. So because <laughs> once we build a computation graph, we don't need a gradient for every node. So we tell system, okay, we need gradient for x. If it's an x is not attached gradients, we cannot not, we cannot not compute gradient for x. So here, let me, so x attached gradients, we can call x.grad to get the gradients. In, it initialized by zeros uh, in default. Okay. Uh, then in the forward pass, we're gonna just compute y equals two times transport x times x of question. Why do you have to do attach grad before? Like why can't you call the thing? So why I cannot call attach grad bef uh, before? No, why can't I call grad directly uh, instead of uh, doing like attach grad first? Oh. Um, like why is attach grad? So why want to attach grad first be before the computation? Well, you need a tail system. Um, um, actually, uh, you need, actually you can do after that, but you need before the backward pass. Okay. Then, now we're gonna compute y equals two times transport a times x. It's the key thing here is nothing uh, magic here, just two times nd dot x transpose times x. But the key thing here, yes, we record this in the record uh, scope. So we mentioned that if you put the computation in the record scope, we're gonna, the system will record the trace and also build the computation for you. Let's write it again. So to compute the gradients, we call the backward pass. We compute the backward pass on the, um, on y, not on x, I mentioned that. So because y's function of x, we're gonna call y dot backward function. Then because we mark x, we're gonna compute the gradients. We know the system will store the gradients on x. So we're gonna run this one. Then now we know that how y is computed. We know the gradients like is four times x. So now evaluate x dot grad minus four times x and we change, uh, we compute the long and a scalar equals to zero and also print x squared. Uh, let me zoom a little bit. So you're gonna see that um, the result is what we expected. Question. So gradient of y with respect to x would be x dot grad. X dot. Okay, so if the function have x and the z, so you cannot call y dot grade. Because in neural network, we have a single loss function, but we have hundreds of ways we're gonna compute gradients. So we need to attach gradient to a variable here. Yeah. Yeah. Also, do we differentiate between like constant or variable nodes? Um, yes, we can, mark thing, uh, we can mark one thing as a constant. And uh, usually if you put an DRA here, you did, didn't attach a gradient, this is a constant. Okay. Um, the thing here, if y is not a vector, so here we compute y equals two times x, element of y is multiplication with x. So we get a vector here. Um, so we're gonna print the y shape, which is actually the same shape f as x. Um, if you're gonna compute the y dot backward, what the system will do is that you just sum, we just compute the y dot sum to get a scalar and compute the gradients. Uh, that is pretty um, 
a compromise because in machine learning or deep learning, the loss function is always a scalar. So we don't do vector loss functions. So make this scalar make life a little bit easier, you don't need to write a sum here, so we automatically do that for you. Okay. Uh, The other thing here, we have two models. One's a training mode, and one's a prediction mode. If you are within a scope, within a record scope, in default we call it the training, uh, the training mode. And if it's not within a, a record scope, we call it the inference scope uh, mode. The reason is because some networks, some layers, kinds of behave differently between tra training and the prediction. So we're gonna talk about the one thing called batch normalization which is running different thing between training and the inference. Also dropout is also behaving differently. So this mock actually tells the system, okay, we are on training, then we're gonna compute on this way. If it's not on training, you're gonna compute on the other way. <coughs> the other uh, thing here is that we can write, write pretty complex functions here. So uh, let me do out a bit. Uh, so we write f equals to uh, with A as an input. A is an the array, we're gonna generate a letter. So we first compute B equals A <coughs> times two, and then Y, B, L2 long, less than 1,000, we're gonna multiply B by two. At the end, if B sum larger than zero, we're gonna return B, else otherwise we're gonna return 100 times B. So this for loop, the while loop, and the if else conditions, the behavior change given different b. So depends, the while loop, how many steps we're gonna execute depends on the, the size of the b, and the, the if else conditions, which branch we're gonna take, it also depends on the input of a. So that this function behavior differently. Given a different function, we kind of build a different computation graph for it. So, also, grad can also do that as well. Here, we generate, we generate random A. It's a random number, and we attach a gradient, and then run D equals FA, and we can run D back uh, I think I don't evaluate the previous function. Let me do that. Uh, well, then, so, then let's verify the results. Because even that's pr pretty dynamic function, the final result is still a linear function of A. So we know that there exists a G so that F A equals G times A. So which means the gradient of X with respect to A, which is equal to G. So we can verify the results by get the result D divided by A and compare to the, the, grad, uh, the gradients. So we can verify the results. Yes, tells you it's equals. But that is, even that you write in the Python control flows, you can still do the autograd. That is, a, that's a pretty major benefit we're gonna give compared to build the computation graph explicitly. Because you need to write in, you need to write in control flow operators for that. Any question here? Question. Well, the f well, that's a good question. I, I don't think so. Uh, probably only Python right now have the imperative of execution right now. Uh, we are writing, we are adding to R recently, but not getting done yet. So R, you need to build a computation graph as what TensorFlow does. Did Julia have this functionality or is it not I think Julia may have it. Julia is pretty, maybe have it. Okay, then the last thing is a bit, little bit complicated. Um, let me do a little bit. So because we talk about a chain rule, we, we know the chain rule, for example, if we can write in partial z over partial x, can be written to partial z over partial y times partial y over partial x. Then before we just compute, let the system do all the things for us. Now we're gonna manually run two backward function. We're gonna evaluate the first, evaluate the first part, uh, evaluate the second part first, and then evaluate the, second, uh, the first part. 
So if we first de define y as a function of x, if we're going to evaluate y backward, we only compute y, partial y over partial x. So but if we want to compute partial z over partial x, what we can do is like we first compute partial z over partial y, which is z backward. And then when you evaluate y dot backward, we pass partial z over partial y into the backward function, which we, we get the whole gradient out. So let me explain a little bit the code here. Um, well, uh, actually, let me just show this slides. So we first define y equals to uh, x times two. So we run y attached gradients, and then evaluate z equals to y times x. Then we run z backward function, which is equals to the y dot grad equals to partial z over partial y. When we run y dot backward function, we pass y dot grad as a head node to this function. So to build a large, so we assume we have the previous result from the first part. And then x squared we are equals to partial z over partial x. It's not, if we didn't pass y grad into the backward function of y, then y dot grad we are equals to partial y over partial x. So we can verify the results because now, because z equals to actually uh, two times x squared, the gradient will be two times x. So we can show that x squared actually equals to two times x. Any questions so far? Okay, 